Alright folks, so Pal World is a terrible game for terrible people. Apparently there's a lot of terrible people out there, folks. Apparently there's a lot of terrible people. And, you know, let's see what they act what this guy actually has to say. Cool, I'll install it, folks. I mean, I captured a merchant in here. Does that make me a bad person? He's been tucked away in my little Pokeball for the longest time. I actually forgot he was there until my kid reminded me today when he jumped on my account. All right, here we go. Pal World is one of the worst games that I've ever played in recent memory. Considering how positive the reviews are right now, you may think I'm being a contrarian. But remember, I was ahead of the curve on Starfield and I was ahead of the curve on Spider-Man 2. I was and you're pretty much wrong on Starfield and I guess you you know, I don't think Spider-Man 2 was a bad game. I just don't think it was a great game. I think it was a good game, but you know, so I guess you was pretty wrong on both of those accounts. So let's see if you can go three out of three, buddy. You're 17 seconds in and I'm already questioning your ju judgment. It's one of the very few people vocally criticizing both games. I got very ferociously attacked for my opinions on both Starfield and especially Spider-Man 2. But give it a few more months and they fell off and everybody saw right through it. Uh I mean, you're going to use review bombing as a way to do a gotcha moment. What type of an idiot is this? Obviously, this is an early access title, which I assure you, it's not going to leave early access anytime soon. But obviously, I have to review the game as it is right now as I played it. I just can't review a game based on how I perceive the game will be in the future. There is definitely a chance for this game to be good. But as it is right now, it is currently very, very bad. And just to address the elephant in the room, no, this is not some politically motivated thing against AI or some plagiarism practices that may or may not have occurred. Because assuming that Pal World did straight up rip off assets from Pokemon games. Which there is no proof of. That really doesn't change my opinion all that much because okay. there are a lot more issues than just that. Pal World being very derivative of Pokemon has been known since it's been announced years ago. And I actually looked forward to it all that much because I actually fell out of Pokemon in the Switch generation. My discontent for Pokemon even got me attracted to RPGs such as Octopath Traveler and Shimigami Tensei 5. Those are good games, by the way, so it's not like the guy has bad taste. Which, going back to my previous point, remember, I was very quick to criticize Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Me pushing back against Scarlet and Violet at the time was very controversial. But Have you noticed anything here so far, chat? Anything that's successful, he is pushing back against criticizing. Uh, is this engagement farming or is it just me? Hey, there's a there's a really popular game over there. I'm going to go and say it's really rubbish so I can get a million views. Hey, at least I'm consistent in calling out bad games, unlike Pal World fans, who will talk out of both sides of their mouths saying how bad Pokemon is while refusing to show any Pal World gameplay because they secretly know it's bad. They just want to own the tendies. My track record on all of this has been very public. So please know that I just think Pal World is garbage. And if you think that Pokemon, Starfield, or Spider Man are also garbage, you better keep Keep that same energy towards this game because the only reason that you do not think that this game is garbage is because these VTubers that got sponsored by the game probably told you that's great. They got a free copy with early access and it's no doubt that that's the reason that they're defending this game so hard. So let's address. I'm not sure how much stupidity this guy can have under one roof. I mean, <laughs> it's a fun game. My kids can't stop playing it. It's a good game. I mean, it's not perfect. There are bugs. And do you know what my kids turned around and said when they saw bugs? They said, there's bugs, but you know, it's early access, so it's kind of to be expected. So, you know, when the game finally gets to full release, if there's still bugs in that manner, then yeah, we'll 
then I'll say that it's uh, doing something wrong. But right now it's early access, and you know he's sixteen. He's not a grown man like this guy. It's the actual gameplay, because that's just about all we have here. You can craft. That's another point. It's a game pass, Edward. Like you said, it's 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 free to everyone. And it takes forever. Yes, there is a crafting system, and they somehow made it even worse than they do normally in these types of survival games. What uh, I disagree. Like, my son has played uh, Ark Evolved, and he actually said that the crossing system here he prefers. Again, that's my son, though, so one person isn't the unanimous, but I guess everyone loving this game can't be bad. Once you select the item to craft, you have to just hold the X button down for multiple seconds, depending on the item that you're crafting. Okay, that sucks. That absolutely sucks. I, you know... You should not need to hold the button down. I totally agree with this one. This one I will give him because this one absolutely sucks. It should just require you to press the button once and it should just work on it while it's doing it. The fact that it requires you to just hold the button down is very annoying. All this does is needlessly waste your time. This will be an ongoing trend when it comes to this game. Also, good luck holding onto enough items to actually craft anything worthwhile because you have a weight limit. And one of the heaviest things that I've encountered is stone, which is plentiful and also just about in every single crafting recipe. If you don't see why this is not a problem, then there is genuinely something wrong with you. When I mean, you've literally got crates that you can build to put stuff in. Literally create a box just for your stones. There's like seven slots in it. And then you can make bigger boxes to make even bigger slots. Like, huh? Increase your level, you know, you know your encumbrance level. When you first spawn in, what you're able to do is incredibly limited. So you're going to have to level up first to access technology with your technology points. Also, when you level up, you get skill points, which you can put into different stats. For the beginning of the game, you're going to want to put it into weight if you want to actually carry anything. The weight limit is almost as constricting as Starfield. At least in Starfield, you had a little robot guy that would follow you around. I hate just about everything in starfield but that guy he's cool he is the goat of starfield he's the gold nugget in the wasteland that is the dumpster now that we brought up the starfield compare something tells me he doesn't like starfield what do you think chat i mean i'm starting to think he doesn't like starfield and let's run into the open world because the open world is also very generic and bland and it starts off very linear the cherry on top is that the human ai that you'll frequently encounter raiding your base is even worse than the human ai in starfield i cannot believe i am actually somewhat praising starfield this is how bad this game is i will say in all disclosure that this game probably is better than starfield it does help that it is 40. <laughs> oh man, this guy is reaching. This guy is reaching. dollars cheaper there is just that sense of discovery that i don't seem to have with starfield because i get to actually see some cool monsters that they kind of look lame but you know what it's just a pokemon knockoff i want to collect them all so after you explore for just about 15 seconds before your weight limit has been reached you need to go back to your base if you want to build up your base well good luck because the building controls are absolutely horrible the only survival game i would say has worse building is lego fortnite which is not a high bar at all the building in this game is absolutely atrocious there are just way too many restrictions you can't build into the ground any and all building can't collide with any other building this is especially torture if you want to build stairs not to mention you're not allowed to build anywhere near your pal box these caves are some of the worst designed dungeons i've ever encountered in 
in video games. All it is is hallways and then an open room with some enemies and some pals. The enemies, as I said before, the AI is not all too bright. Keep walking down the copious amounts of hallways and then you get to the boss fight. In the footage here, the pal actually got stuck into a river. I decided to exploit that. Then my stone spear actually got damaged and decided to do like three damage per hit. And I was not going to sit there doing all that ship damage to a boss. I was going to place a repair bench, but I'm not allowed to build in dungeons. Just another restriction of building. All of I mean, I don't see the problem with not being able to build in dungeons. That's why you kind of carry more than one weapon. But he could have just picked up his pal, right? And then just started attacking with the pal. Doesn't that pal act as a flamethrower? I mean, everything he's saying just sounds so stupid. And Susano, yeah, I can't see Nintendo having any legal uh, thing over this game. I, I just literally see nothing. Exactly, Ventura. Like, you come prepared. I've got like three, four weapons in my backpack. Always. I've got a crossbow. I've got the spear. I've got the baseball bat. You know, don't judge me. But, I, you know, I, I always carry like three weapons and make sure that wherever I go, I've got something because weapons get damaged and weapons break. I mean, your stupidity is your problem, buddy. All the mechanics in this game do not gel together at all. For as much as this game is trying to ape Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, it really doesn't understand what makes those games tick. For as little enemies as there are in Breath of the Wild, they are incredibly dynamic. Not to mention you can go about fighting them in plenty of ways. It almost makes every fight a puzzle in itself. The climbing gives you some risk and reward. If you choose to up your stamina early on, you'll be able to climb to newer and higher places. If you want to be risky, you get to hit the X button and then you can jump at the cost of more stamina. These fluid controls do not copy over to PAL World at all. Even the gliding in PAL World just feels so sloppy. In Tears of the Kingdom, once you press the X button in midair, your glider's out. You press it again, it's out. There is incredibly little lag to the glider in Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. The same cannot be said in Power World. It feels incredibly sluggish and- Is he seriously trying to compare a, you know, in-house Nintendo studio with an indie studio? I mean, <laughs> is he trying to actually compare the studio that's behind Zelda who have built countless games? as a finished product to an early access game. Like my dude is on some, I mean, whatever he's on, I mean, he needs to give me some because uh, he's not making any sense whatsoever. I mean, it's in early access. It's allowed to have some defects. That's the whole point of being early access. Now, if Power World came out as a finished product, it probably would have got hit a lot harder, right? People would have had a lot more complaints, but the fact that it's early access and they're still improving upon it, developing and, you know, making things better, adding quality of life stuff, that's what early access is for. And takes up just about three times the much stamina as it does in Tears of the Kingdom. This game would just be so much better if you just got rid of most of the restrictions and actually gave the player freedom. But instead, just about every single aspect of this game is level gated. If you want to craft a specific thing, you're going to need to level up to a specific point and spend your technology points. If you actually want to explore for a significant amount of time, then you're going to have to up your weight. What does that require? leveling up so you're in this very vicious cycle of having to go back to base just so you can store your items just so you can go back out just to level up i am consistently cut off from actually engaging in the world and the game just well here's a big you know a big brain move right chat here's a big brain move right hear me out here right hear me out hear me out hear me out here's a big brain move right What if, right, what if when he's in the open world, 
And just hear me out here. He creates a crate, a box, and puts his stuff in there, makes a note of it where it is on the world map, and then continues doing what he's doing with an empty inventory. What if he did that? Would that get around his problem? Would that solve his problem? Because I think it would solve his problem. And, you know, creating those boxes is very, very cheap. Very, very uh, low resource. I create them next to my uh, ore mining. I create it next to other places. Or if I just need to, if I've collected too many stuff, I just make a box around me, put the stuff in there, and I go and do what I need to do. I mean, the reality is, it is a game that borrows from multiple different genres, like Ark, like Rust. I mean, it's going to have PvP at some point. Uh, and it combines the element that people wanted in capturing, you know, Poke Pokemon-type creatures. That blend works really well, and it hits a niche that people haven't had. Therefore, it's doing something that just isn't available right now. And now when I asked uh, a couple of people, well, why don't you like Ark Evolved? They said, well, I don't like hunting dinosaurs. I prefer this because the creatures look better. Simple as. So I can store my stuff back at the base. I am actively being prevented from exploring the world. It feels like a tether to my base that I set up previously, just so I can store all of my belongings. The more that I actually play this game, the more I'm convinced that there's no actual redeeming qualities of this game at all. The only people that think this game is good is just VTuber fans and people that want to dunk on tendies because I genuinely do not understand at all what the appeal is of these games. Survival, open world, and being able to collect creatures. Something that hasn't been done before. So, you know, something that hasn't combined all three of those together. That's what's making it. That is why. People like it. The fact that you can't see this is a little disturbing. Just play Valheim. Thank you to all those who are watching because I just have a feeling before this is getting posted that a large percentage of people who see this are just going to be a bunch of pow world dick writers who are going to call me attendee in the comment section down below. Even though if you've looked at my history at all when it comes to criticizing video games, you would know that is not the case. If you've I mean, you've already made it clear that the only thing you like to do is criticize games to get clicks. It's got nothing to do with you being an Nintendo. The, rea the reality is you're doing it just for clicks. Made it this far, comment in the comments. All right, that's the end of his video. He's just going to talk about plugging his channel. But, you know, I'll uh, leave a link in the description below. And so for those of you that want to go check it out, do feel like uh, going over there. But... That's uh, a wrap for this React video. See you next time. Remain legend.